And that's why the ham is your best radio for emergencies, disasters, and post-apoc. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Scott and I've been doing preparedness, coaching, training, and a podcast. Podcast for about seven years, but doing all this the rest of my life. What I want to talk about really is, is your emergency communications after a event. Uh, whether it's phones go out like we had a few weeks ago, uh, no access to internet on your or data. This is your first solution. This is your emergency radio option. The reason I recommend these is because you can use this as a battery bank. You've also got your AM, FMs, and all of your NOAA weather uh, reporting in here. But that's not communications. This is just listening, right? A lot of people think, oh, I'll just get a couple of radios and we'll be fine. First wave or first option are these FRS radios very short range you can get them anywhere they're pretty cheap and pretty easy they've got 22 channels the big bulk of them 8 through 14 are just short short waves so it's like a half mile at best they're line of sight radios they're not your best solution these are great for little backpacking trips camping trips where you're not more than a half mile away from everybody right but not a real good emergency solution the next option is to go with gmrs now these bad boys they use FRS channels as well, but they have a total of 30 channels. And the cool thing is, is one license, you can put 10 radios in your family off of one license. It's $35. There's no test. And this gives you a much higher range. Um, th these ones here are eight watts. So I can get a couple miles out of these depending on the terrain and depending on line of sight. Again, these radios, FRS, GMRS, they all work line of sight. Then you can run into the CB bands if you want to. Those are AM, but a lot of the people I know have been moving away from those. Then you can jump into the ham radios. This is a longer antenna, comes with a stock short. The thing about ham is the distance is phenomenal. Uh, worldwide access, depending on your output and your repeater connections, you can do a lot with ham. It does require a license. You can get on this without having a license and you'll get in trouble. If you have a license, you're fine. There are trainers all over the place. There are resources online. You can get your license. It's 35 bucks and a test. And there are a lot of places they'll teach you for free. Um, look for your local ham. Elmer is what you want to find. And Elmer is basically a mentor trainer person. They're phenomenal and they know crap tons 